Surprise, I'm not a b-boy, but I do have baggy shorts, baggy pants, and wriggle t-shirts. But I love the oh, power move, oh. I love the down rock, I love the freezes, I love the wraps, I love the way it works. This is how uh, snowboarding started. Great dance is great for the Olympics, I can't wait for it. The Russian judges Hold the phone. Like Bill's not a b-boy? <laughs> see what I just did? I immediately what regret my new. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Lillibon. Tony, you won a big award last night. You want to tell the people all about it? Tony Kornheiser, it's NASA's Lifetime Achievement Award for jokes involving Uranus. Oh! 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 Did people laugh? Well, they did didn't. they laugh like that? Did nobody laugh right, like that? It's a lifetime achievement. That was like, funny joke. That was like Sanford and Son. That was amazing. Or well, like if anybody Kawhi. remembers that. Kawhi's Welcome to laugh. PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Giannis wins the MVP. More Mets dysfunction. And could the NCAA ban California schools from national tournaments? But we begin today with a report in the New York Times by Mark Stein that says the Boston Celtics have, quote, emerged as a stealth suitor for Kemba Walker, unquote. This presumes, of course, that Kyrie Irving will be leaving Boston. Al Horford has already left. Wilbon, if the Celtics land Kemba Walker, will that make them contenders? No, not, not, not alone, no. I mean, they're talking about losing Horford and losing Kyrie. These are two players, two players at the opposite positions on the floor in terms of responsibilities and what they do. And no, and I, and I, I think that Horford, I think Horford's the bigger loss. Because Horford's a guy who's also calming and a guy that people like to play with and go to work with. And, and Kyrie, not so much, as it turned out. So Kimba Walker is an asset. And he's an asset that I'm sure several teams would like to have. He's going to make a lot of money, and he can play. But is he going to, by himself, push the Boston Celtics past the likes of Philadelphia, Milwaukee, and Toronto? No. Well, he's going to make Contenders doesn't mean you automatically win. Contenders means... You're already in a, a group of four. They're already a contender. Well, but you would think that they would drop a little bit without yeah. Horford. Yes. And without Kyrie. Yes. I'm going to establish a position here. That's the Celtics. If they are not a unique team, they are a very special team in this regard. And I say this with the experience of seeing what happened with Kyrie Irving. They are better as overachievers without being star-laden. They are better. They are one of the rare teams where the, where the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts. I agree with you. I think they will be better without Kyrie Irving and Me better too. with Kemba Walker. They had a very small guard a couple of years ago. Yes. Isaiah Thomas. Yes. They were really good, or getting certainly getting on the pad of very good with Isaiah Thomas. Then they, they, and they, they made essentially, that deal. bottom line, swapped him out for Kyrie. Kemba Walker is also a small guard. Yes, Kemba Walker has what I would call really effective numbers without the monstrous ego that certain star players have. So I would tell you that getting Kemba Walker puts them puts them in the contender status. Now, replacing Horford's tough. It's tough. What I about replacing tough. Horford I think was what I was going to ask you. I think it's you. tough. But you talk about other teams like yeah. Toronto. If, 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 well, if, they, if, if, if leaves, Kawhi's not there, leaves, okay, but right. Philly, we don't know what they're going to have either. We don't know anybody's And we don't know about, we don't know about the dysfunction in Philly. You know, if that is there or not. Right. Now, I do think Milwaukee is legit. Well, Milwaukee's got Brogdon to replace if he was to leave. Now, he's restricted. So, they can keep him. I think it, in other words, I think we would both be agreed that Kemba Walker would be a big deal. He'd be a big deal. Yep. They, they need more big deals right now, Boston does, Tony, I think. An another one, if possible. The NBA made official last night what the regular season made plain a while ago. Giannis Antetokounmpo is the league's most valuable player. He won by a comfortable margin over James Harden, and Paul George was third. This, remember, is a regular season award, and Giannis led his team to the best record in the regular season, ahead of the Raptors and Warriors. Tony, we know Giannis has work to do. He and his team lost four straight to Toronto in the playoffs, but now that he's won, what do you think are reasonable expectations for his career? Mike, I think if you look at the length and breadth of the NBA, which we can because it's not 200 years, it's in the modern era. If you're the MVP, you're expected to win. You're expected to win. I'll just go through a small list of multiple MVP winners. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Steph Curry, Tim Duncan. Their MVPs Check, check, won. check, check, check. Now, Steve Nash did not win. No, he didn't. James Harden to this point has not won. Russell Westbrook to this point has not won. But I think the expectations on an MVP's shoulders are quite large. I, I, uh, to me, 
Even if you don't win, you better get to the finals, I think. Yeah, Tony, I'll give you another little list. I mean, of the 10 youngest winners, the only guy who didn't win, and obviously his career was altered by injury, was Derrick Rose. Yeah. The other guys, and they became MVPs at 23 and 24. Yeah. Wes Unsell and Bob McAdoo, and there's a, you know, there's a list. You go, wow, Moses Malone is one of those guys. I think a reasonable expectation, easy for me to say, is one championship, maybe getting to the finals a couple of times. But, Tony, I will yeah. say this. What, what, what gives me pause, and it makes me reluctant to say it, I think, I think Antetokounmpo is a part of the changing of the guard, that you're going to have people like Embiid, you know, and it, it, it marks a new era. Like LeBron, it took like four or five years for that right. era to click in after Jordan, Barkley, David Robinson, those guys will be at the front Magic Bird, all those guys in the dream team. Yeah. It took, Scotty, it took like five years. It's not taking five years now. The, I, I think this is the handoff of the baton, but, but there it's going to be there hard is to win. a statistic that is important when you discuss simply MVP and what that means. There have been 34 different winners of the MVP award, and all but eight were champions. That's a lot. So this ratchets up it does. The all expectations. of the expectations yeah. on this kid. Yeah. And it does, and you got to live with it. And do you think Milwaukee can handle that? Doesn't it, doesn't it start with keeping their Middleton and, and Brogdon? Doesn't it start with that? I do. You got me. Yesterday's Mets story was about the manager cursing out a reporter and apologizing for it eventually. Today's Mets story is about the general manager directing the manager to make specific pitching moves during a game. The New York Post says Brody Van Wagenen, the first-year GM, ordered Mickey Calloway to take Jacob deGrom out of a recent game in the seventh inning. Wilbon, if this is true, do you have any problem with a GM doing this? I do, because I'm not from the new school, where somebody sits with a computer readout of numbers and manages the damn game. So I hate this. I think this is, I know this is not the only place that happens, but it seems like just egomania is running rampant in the New York Mets clubhouse. Makes them even easier for me to root against to ever win a game. I mean, DeGrom, unless DeGrom has some injury we know about, and even Which he then, said he did not. And he said he did not. And if he does, then you know what? Be at the game. You're the GM. GMs do go on the road. I don't care if the game was in Arizona. Be at the game or, 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 sort of relinquish control immediately to the person who is at the game well, in the dugout. Okay, so I, to me, this comes down to the organizational flowchart. If the Mets have invested the general manager, a first-year general manager, with the, with the authority to do whatever he sure. wants, and they're agreed upon that, fine. If there's the split, which sometimes happens, the general manager does everything up to the game starting, right. and then the field manager has say, if that's the way it is with the Mets, and we don't know how it is with the Mets, then it's wrong. What I would point out is Brody Van Wagenen was an agent a minute and a half ago. Now, he, I, I think he played college baseball at Stanford, but he was running CAA's baseball division. His job was to procure good contracts for his that clients. That doesn't stop people, I, Tony. It doesn't stop people from thinking they know everything. I talked to a general manager of a team right after it won a recent World Series, and no, it's not the Cubs. And that person was telling me about people who have never been in professional clubhouses of any kinds in any sport, and yet they have they feel they have just taken so much authority well, they have, they have input, because they of have that analytics of that they now want to make decisions and they've never been in a major league clubhouse. I, it's st stunning to me. Let me just say this as a former Mets fan for many, many former. years. <laughs> Mickey Calloway cannot be the manager of this Longer? team next year. Going, no, not, he, he just can't be going forward. This, yeah. is, this, is, this is a complete mess. Uh, I, do, do you I think you can invest. I do think, look... For the Nats, Mike Rizzo goes to every game. I yeah. think you can invest a GM with the authority to do this. I don't know if that's what, what happened here. Mickey, it's Baseball, like you crazy. know what? It, it will, baseball's got a lot of stuff, a lot of issues right now, it seems to me. And this is, this is one of them that I don't know is trending in a direction I like. Tony, we have an NCAA story which needs examination. The state of California has proposed legislation under consideration that would allow college athletes there to earn compensation for the use of their name, image, or likeness beginning in 2023. That may sound enlightened to many, but NCAA President Mark Emmert implied that if the bill becomes law, California schools could face the prospect of being prohibited from participating in NCAA championships. 
Tone, this seems like a game of chicken now, so who's going to run whom off the road? This, to me, is a really interesting and almost fascinating story. Yeah. And I will tell you what will happen if the NCAA, and I tend to side with them in this to a degree. I do. And I'll get to that. If the NCAA were to ban California schools from national championships, here's exactly what would happen. There would be a championship set up in California in football between USC and Stanford. And there would be a championship set up in basketball between UCLA and, let's say, San Diego State. And the ratings would be monstrous because they have all the best players. Because if they're the only state in the country paying players, those players, think? those players are coming in. This is a very important thing. Now, I side with the NCAA with, in, in this regard. I don't think you can have an NCAA where, where states' rights say, we can pay you over here, yeah. but we can't pay you over here. I think they have to come to some sort of solution. I don't think banning schools is the particular solution, but you can't think this is that you can have that. They'll get all the good players. I don't ever side with the NCAA in anything, um, and I'm not going to side with them here because I'm not going to side with anybody who objects to, say, a University of Georgia. I'm picking another state now. A University of Georgia running back having a game where he runs 12 times for 280 yards and alums and boosters say, I'd love to give you $1,000 for that jersey, son. Right. And he can't do it because the NCAA says no, even though the state says, yes, you can. The NCAA is going to have to change its tune. This is a game of well, chicken. You I, know it is. I think you have to reach some sort of settlement here. What you probably can't have is every D1 athlete in the country getting paid. I don't even know that Bernie that Sanders can come up with the wait, money wait, 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 wait. to pay everybody. But you don't have to. And in some, in some, who do you in pay? some states, who, do you pay? who earns it? Who's, who's so, marketed oh, to the point where they get... Look, I was going to pick a place. In Northwestern, that might be the women's lacrosse team because they won seven okay. national titles. In Connecticut, it might be Gino Oriem's That's team true. because they won so many titles. But it changes ban, state to if state. If you say that on, like, if only one state does this, they will get all the great you players. Think California's going to be the only one once it does this? I don't know what happens. Oh, that's, everybody's that's, why, fall in line. that's why the United States has a Supreme Court yeah. to supposedly tell you what the law of the land is. And that's why you see states now in other areas than sports m putting bills out there and laws out there just Let's to get, get the to the Supreme here. Court. Uh, yes. Who's going to win? The state of California with a, with a Pied Piper effort of everybody following right. or the NCAA. This is what I'm saying. I could see that something like that going all the way to the Supreme Court. I could. Let's take a break. Coming up, who should be favored in Friday's World Cup matchup, the USA or France? And who's more likely to leave his current team, Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard? But do you think your Northwestern basketball awesome. players would go there if Berkeley was paying money? Well, they're all Midwestern kids. Oh, stop <laughs> It is time for toss-up. There are four questions. There are two choices. There is one gorgeous competitor. Where? Thank you. Thank you. Huh? What's first? Toss-up. Who should be favored on Friday? Team USA or Team France? So I know the game will be played in Paris, and I would think that that is a significant home field advantage for the French team. But I think the United States should be favored. They're the defending champions. They're ranked number one in the world. They're the best in the world. Just ask them. I mean, uh, to me, they they should be favored in this particular game. Home field, we've we've seen a lot of teams go to seventh games yeah, and but, win on the road. But that's not this sport. And if this game was being played in New York, you wouldn't say if France was a defending champion and number one ranked, they would be favored over the United States. There's no way in the world you would say that. I so would. I'm not going to say, say that a that a, that a French team, which is ranked in the top four, yeah. it's not like one is one. It's not a Virginia so versus you think they should be favored? State Do you think France? Yes, okay. France playing in Paris should be favored. You know the shame of this? The shame of this is that this is in the round of eight. And we saw this in the NCAAs yeah. with Duke and Michigan it State. Later, this is but it bad scheduling. It is. Bad it is. brackets. Yep. Next. Toss-up more likely to leave their current team, Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard? Well, let me say that I think it makes more sense for Kevin Durant to stay because the Warriors are offering him five years at max money and saying you can have a medical red shirt for the first year. And then if you want to be traded, we'll try to work something out. To me, that is a no-lose for Durant. Kawhi Leonard, 
he's unknowable. We have no idea what he's going to do. <laughs> I would say this, though. Today, yeah. I think both will stay, but ask me tomorrow wow. I could change my this mind. This represents a significant change on your part, yep. considering every day I sat in Toronto for about a month, yep. and I would say, Tony, I think the Raptors have a chance. Again, ask me and tomorrow. And you would say, yeah, I'm sorry, he's got a house in San Diego or something. No, I didn't say that. What I, what I said was he can go wherever he wants because he he's won the title. He can, well, that was before he won the title when I was sitting in Toronto saying this to you. I'm going to say Kawhi because Kevin Durant has this, this set of circumstances in which you have to rely, depend deeply on a medical staff, right. one that you know versus going somewhere where you don't know them. Presumably, you might know their names. You don't know them. And he's going to be in a brand new state-of-the-art arena that's better than anything in the world today. And he's already there, and it fits him, and he knows the people, and he seems to so like them. So you're saying he'll stay. He stays. Well, so I got to, the answer to the question would have to be Kawhi, but I think, you think they they'll both stay, stay today. That's where you are today. today. Yeah. Next. Toss-up, more likely to win an MVP, Zion Williamson or Luka Doncic? So right now I'm going to go with Luka Doncic. Because we know he can play in the NBA. We've seen him in the NBA. We have not seen Zion Williams. He's great talent. He's going to make a tremendous amount of money. He's spectacular to watch. But we don't know that he can play yet in the NBA. Luka Doncic is on a team where if Porzingis can play. He's going to play. And he's given him the ball. Then suddenly he's already an MVP contender. Dallas, of course, is, is where Nowitzki's from. The only European who ever won MVP. I'm not saying Zion won't. I'm saying right now I would favor Doncic. I think I favor Doncic too, but if there's going to be uh, a way to present this for Zion, it's simply this. David Griffin knows how to build a team. Very young team and right he, now. Well, Tony, Tony, Tony. I, we don't see he's going to he win it three or four years from now. That's LeBron right. took seven years. Sure. Well, I guess it was four years sure. before LeBron won. But the point is Zion is being built around. Every consideration is being made. To, to take into account his set of talents. Well, that's right. So, so, so that would suggest to me Zion's going to be able to do this if he's anything like we expect. The Nowitzki reference, by the way, onto Tocumpo just won. So, and yeah, I had so the that. second, Let's, but the, yeah. the first is and for the only for a long time. Next, last one, toss up. Who is in the right? Tyler Flowers or Wilson Contreras? Okay, these are two catchers. Contreras hits a home run. If you watch this, he hits a home run. He turns around. And he barks at Flowers, okay? But this isn't the start of what happened. No. The start is the pitch before yeah. where Flowers framed a pitch in order to get a strike. All right? And Contreras barked at him. No, he didn't. And Flowers, yes, he no, did. No, he didn't. And he barked You're back. wrong. I watched the game, and I know everything that happened in it. Watch this up, Steve. He barks, barks at the umpire, not at the catcher, not at Flowers. He says to the umpire, because he's catching the same game, that's low. This is what catchers do. They he, frame pitches. Yeah, but, okay, Even but Contreras. he didn't bark. At Flowers. So he I'm, at okay. the ump. I'm going to blue. tell you that I think that Flowers is right, but in Contreras' case, being a catcher as well and hitting a home run, if you're going to let the kids play, then you got to let it happen. Watching the great explanation of this last night was given by Harold Reynolds and Sean Casey on MLB Network because they went into this for like an hour. When you are talking to the umpire, the catcher, the opposing catcher, needs to shut up and oh, mind so you his, think Flowers his own. I know what happened. Flowers yapped and said something to the effect of, you get back in the box, enough of this. Can I just point And then he hits out? it out, right. and then he gets in his face. And you know what? The Braves, they're always point yapping out anyway. Thing get the you. Atlanta Braves out. They're very good. Let him know. To He's a Cubs them. fan. That's right. He's a Cubs I'm fan. I'm a Cubs That's fan. That's it. Get the Atlanta out. Is. That's me. He's, he's Get out. Back the Cubs, the Bulls, the Bears. Enough of this junk. Blackhawks. Let's take one last break. Not junk. Day. Still to come, Jalen Ramsey, your boy. No, not. Appears to be <laughs> dialing back his trash talk. Is that a good thing? And is Magic Johnson right that D'Angelo Russell could be a good fit now for the Lakers? Also, you're back Northwestern. Everything out of Chicago. It's, yeah.